In today's video, we're going to look at tool length offsets on CNC mills. Typically, there's three different methods that are used, and we'll go through the pros and cons of all three. So looking at tool offsets, or specifically tool length offsets, there's typically three, three scenarios that most shops will fall under into uh, choosing a method for doing the tool length offset. So what I'm gonna do here is just, just quickly draw in, uh, these are my machine spindles for the three different scenarios. And then I'm gonna draw in uh, three tools for each as well. And then obviously we're gonna have our table down here. And with that, we're gonna have a workpiece on our table that we're gonna be machining. And basically we're gonna have scenario one here for tool offset measurement, scenario two, and scenario number three. So with that, we're gonna have some common values here that are gonna to apply to all three situations. And that is that the tool is in fact two inches long. So all three of our tools are two inches long. The workpiece itself will be four inches is thick. So it's four inches off the table. And uh, common to all scenarios as well is gonna be the distance from the spindle face down to the table. This measurement here is gonna be, let's go with 16 inches. Okay, so for these three scenarios, we're gonna go through how you would set both the G54Z value and the tool offset length uh, depending on how you go about picking up your workpiece and tool. So first up, let's go with this guy over here and we'll call this tool number one or scenario number one. And this is what we're gonna say is the most common or easiest method. Typically, if you hop on a CNC machine for your first time, this is probably the method that uh, a sales rep will, will tell you to do. And just to extend the surface over, and basically what happens here is you take the tip of the tool and you bring it directly down to the workpiece and you touch the top of the workpiece. So in this scenario here, again, we're looking at uh, the differences in the G54Z values and the tool height offset value. So in this scenario here, when you bring the tool directly down onto the workpiece, your G54 is typically gonna be set at zero and your tool height offset will be set at the amount the machine needed to move to get that tool down to the workpiece. So in this scenario, again, I'm assuming the tools here are all at Z home. Uh, so this tool had to move, its extent of travel is 16 inches to the table, four inches for the workpiece height, two inches for our, our tool length. Again, I guess typically you wouldn't know the actual length of the tool, but just for calculation purposes, we do know that. Uh, so that's gonna give us basically 10 inches. So when this offset is done, the value you put in for your tool length offset is gonna be negative 10. So negative 10 in the tool offset, zero in G54. So like I said, this is the most common method when you're first getting into CNC. And the reasons why you would wanna use this method is, is one, it's, it's very, it's, it's easy. You take the tool down to the top of the workpiece and touch your workpiece off. Um, it's obviously a very quick method because you're only doing the one touch off the tool to the top of the workpiece and you're done. Uh, obviously you switch to the next tool and you repeat that for the rest of them. But the problem with this touch off method is what happens if I get a bigger piece of stock for the next job? What if it's four and an eighth? What if it's five and three sixteenths? Uh, you need to then retouch off all of your tools to the new workpiece. So this method is only good for one setup which is uh, obviously not ideal. So scenario number two is going to try and basically make up for this shortfall of only being able to do one setup. So with that, typically we throw in another, well, we'll call it an intermediate setting device. And it could be anything from a height gauge to something simple like a, a two, four, six blocks or a one, two, three block. In my scenario here, I'm gonna assume this is a two, four, six block and I've got it 
the tall way, so I've got this six inches off of the table. And what we're going to do here is again, I'll extend this over to show that this tool is being brought down and touched off on the top of this intermediate block. So what this allows us to do here is if we're not directly touching the tool off to the workpiece, so we basically set the tool to something independent, if we change our workpiece height, we can then keep our tool offsets for different jobs and just adjust a G54 value. And that G54 value is, is going to be the difference between our intermediate touch-off point and our actual workpiece. So looking at scenario number two, the G54 Z value is the difference between the height of our intermediate touch-off point and our workpiece, which in our case happens to be negative two inches. It's, polarity is obviously very important. And then we'll call this tool number two for scenario number two. The height offset value for this tool, to make this tool touch this block here, given the values that we know, so 16 for the full travel, minus 6 inches of the block, so we're 10 inches there, minus 2 inches of the tool, gives us negative 8 inches. So with this, notice the two values we've got in the two scenarios. In scenario one, we've got zero and a negative 10. And in scenario two, we've got a negative two and a negative eight. Notice they both add up to the same negative 10 overall travel. So we're still telling the machine to move the tool 10 inches to get to the top of the workpiece. We're just doing it in a slightly different manner. So as mentioned, scenario number two allows you to put in a different size workpiece. We could put in a five inch workpiece here. And all we have to do is reset our G54 value. We don't have to individually redo each and every tool. So this one is good for multiple setups. And I guess the downfall of this scenario is that you actually have to uh, pick up the workpiece. So there's one extra step in there where you have to define that distance from the workpiece uh, to your setting block. So our last scenario, we'll call this one uh, number three. So what we're going to do this time is something completely different. So, so far these tool length values are really arbitrary. They're not um, intuitive. They, they basically mean nothing. So if you walk up to this machine and you see a tool length height offset of eight, negative eight inches, um, that doesn't really mean anything to you. Uh, conversely, if you were to take this tool and put it into another machine, uh, that value may or may not work in that other machine. If that machine is exactly a duplicate of the machine you took it out of, then maybe you get lucky and it works. But for the most part, negative tool length values, these are these negative styles here, will not work in other machines. So this third style is going to try and address that problem as well. So over in here, I'm going to extend this edge off a little bit. What we do with scenario number three is we take this spindle, so a known reference point that will be independent of the tool. So no matter which tool we put in, this spindle face will always be in the same location. And we bring it down and we touch the top of the workpiece. And that is going to set our G54 Z value. So in this scenario, you can see for this spindle, face to move all the way down to the workpiece, it would have to travel 16 inches minus four. So we'd be doing a travel of negative 12 inches. And then for our tool setting, so let's call this tool number three, the height offset value here is the actual length of the tool. Okay, and we already know that is positive two inches. Now, there's a bunch of different ways we can go about um, setting this value or, or determining what the actual tool length is. Um, most common is that you would bring this, this surface down, touch the top of your, your workpiece, and a lot of controls will have an operator position um, callout in the readout that you can zero out the Z value. So what you'll do is you'll come down, you'll touch this face to the top of the block, you'll set your G54Z. At the same time, you'll zero out the operator Z value. 
move your spindle up, load your tool in, bring this tool back down to the same piece on the workpiece, and the new value in the Z column is going to be the actual tool length. And obviously you repeat that for all of your tools. So with this one, um, as was mentioned in the previous scenario, this works for multiple setups. Downfall being we do have to pick up the actual workpiece. And then uh, benefits of this guy are, uh, I think this is the one that is the, is the most important, is the tool, the tool offset equals the tool's actual length. So when you have this tool in the machine, you look at your tool offset being two inches, you can go into your machine, take out your vernier, and physically measure the distance from this spindle face down to the tip of the tool, and you can actually measure how long your tool is. Now, I wouldn't recommend doing that for your tool offset uh, settings, but it's a very convenient double check. Uh, much more intuitive than these negative numbers that mean basically nothing. Uh, another benefit of this positive tool length is once we've measured this tool, this tool can go into any machine in the shop. This value here will work in all of the machines. There might be a small variation that you have to adjust for um, depending on the, on the taper in the machine, but for the most part, this will be a very accurate uh, measurement and it will work across all of your machines. So I think that covers tool offsets in a nutshell. I guess maybe not. There's one more thing we should point out and that's probes. Probes will be, typically they're set up in this number three scenario. Uh, your probe might look a little bit different. Obviously it might be a little bit longer. You could say that distance out down here is three inches, but it works in basically the same way. So how does a probe work? The probe itself is gonna be of a known value, like this three inch value we just set out here. And when you call up your probe and you come down and touch the top of your workpiece, it's doing this calculation in the background. It knows how long the probe is. It knows how far it moved to get to this location. So in our scenario here, with a three inch long probe, it would have to move, so 16 inches, minus four is 12, minus three, it had to move minus nine inches, but the machine would know how long that probe is. So it would subtract the distance or the length of that probe and come up with an overall value of negative 12 inches to input into the G54Z value. So I think that pretty much sums up our tool length offset conversation and also wraps up this video.